In January 2021, former U.S. President Donald Trump made headlines not just for leaving office, but also for losing his digital megaphone. Twitter, one of the world's largest social media sites, banned him from its platform. This move ignited a fierce debate over free speech, censorship, and the role of social media in modern politics. In this video, we will delve deeper into the reasons behind Trump's Twitter ban, the broader implications it carries, and the surrounding context. The context. The events leading up to Trump's ban were centered on the storming of the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. The event, which resulted in a few deaths and widespread property damage, occurred shortly after Trump addressed a rally of his supporters. During this speech, he repeated claims of election fraud and encouraged his followers to fight like hell to overturn the election results. These remarks were seen as inflammatory and led to growing concerns about the impact of Trump's rhetoric on his supporters. Twitter's response. Twitter took swift action in response to the chaos at the Capitol and Trump's role in it. On January 8, 2021, the company permanently suspended Donald Trump's at Real Donald Trump account. Twitter cited concerns that his tweets could incite further violence and stated that the ban was due to violations of its glorification of violence policy. This policy prohibits the use of the platform to promote or glorify violence, which Trump's tweets were seen as potentially doing. The censorship debate. Trump's Twitter ban immediately sparked a debate over the power of social media companies to regulate content on their platforms. Critics argued that this was a violation of free speech, accusing Twitter and other tech giants of acting as arbiters of public discourse. Supporters of the ban, on the other hand, contended that it was a necessary step to prevent further violence and protect the integrity of the platform. Section 230 and the role of tech companies. A key aspect of the debate revolves around Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. This law shields online platforms from being held liable for the content posted by their users while giving them the authority to moderate their platforms. Critics argued that social media companies like Twitter should lose these protections if they engage in censorship, while others believe that these platforms have a responsibility to police harmful content. The impact on political discourse. Trump's Twitter ban raised questions about the future of political communication in the digital age. Twitter was a central tool in Trump's communication strategy, allowing him to bypass traditional media and communicate directly with his supporters. Without access to this platform, he lost a significant means of influence, and his supporters lost a direct line to his thoughts and statements. Alternative platforms. In response to his ban, Trump and his supporters flocked to alternative social media platforms like Parler and Gab, which catered to more conservative audiences. However, these platforms faced their own challenges, including hosting restrictions and concerns about extremist content. Parler, in particular, experienced a temporary shutdown as major hosting providers severed ties with the platform due to concerns about its content moderation practices. The banning of Donald Trump from Twitter was a watershed moment in the intersection of technology, politics, and free speech. It highlighted the immense power that social media companies hold in shaping public discourse and the complexities of balancing free speech with the need to prevent harm. As the debate over online speech and regulation continues, the Trump Twitter ban will likely be remembered as a pivotal moment in the ongoing evolution of digital communication and its impact on politics. It serves as a reminder that the boundaries of free speech in the digital age are still being defined, and the role of social media platforms in shaping political discourse is a topic of ongoing scrutiny and debate.